What's up guys and welcome to today's video and our new series where we're going to dive into the history behind the most haunted, paranormal, and just downright creepy places across the United States. And each episode will be focusing on a particular state. And to start off the 50 part series, we're going to be focusing on the state of California and places such as the CISO Hotel, the Hotel Del Coronado, the Hollywood Roosevelt, and the RMS Queen Mary. And while some of those places sound probably familiar, I also wanted to include places that are less well known. So without further ado, let's dive right into today's video and the new series called The Haunted 50. The first and many haunted places we're going to explore within this series is the CISO Hotel. This 14-story building that was originally opened in 1924 marketed itself as a high-end hotel. Investors William Banks Hanner, Charles L. Dix, and Robert H. Shoops would end up investing around $1 million to help build this hotel, which is equivalent to over $18 million in 2024. They would work alongside with Lloyd Lester Smith and W.W. W. Patton for the construction and the architecture of the building. After a few years of being open, economic hardship would end up affecting people all around the world, and that was due to the Great Depression in 1924. This would cause a lot of issues for the hotel, including people not being able to travel to the hotel, which is one big issue, but people also not being able to pay for a hotel room once they even got there. So that's two really big issues, and then plus, the Great Depression would start an increase in homeless people, not only in California, but again across the world, and this would cause a new place called Skid Row to arise in California. And sadly, the CISO Hotel was right on Skid Row. And all of these unfortunate events would help lead the hotel to being the well-known place it is today. Going back a few years, even before the Great Depression started, we can see that the first reported death within the hotel happened. This man, Percy Orman Cook, would end up taking his life from a self-inflicted gun wound in 1927. And this would end up marking the beginning of many unfortunate events from even more sewer slides to essays to even murderers staying within the hotel such as Richard Ramirez and Jack Utenweger. And this would only be the beginning of obviously weird things happening at the CISO Hotel because on top of that, there was many other deaths that occurred, with one of those being W.K. Norton from an overdose and Louise B. Borden from another self-inflicted gun wound, and Roy Thompson, who would end up jumping from the hotel. Many people think that you actually get taken over by a dark entity, or the hotel has a dark entity that makes people do things that they normally wouldn't. So a lot of people believe that the people that jumped from the hotel weren't actually jumping and instead that they were either pushed or talked into doing it. Another infamous death within the hotel was caused by Dorothy Jean Purcell, who after giving birth would throw her newborn baby that she believed was dead out of the window. However, the baby was alive when it was born and it's also reported that she was afraid that her husband or boyfriend may react negatively to her giving birth, so that she was kind of scared about the whole situation, but the whole situation is just crazy in general. Elizabeth Short is another spirit that calls the CISO Hotel home. And many of you guys probably don't know her as this name, but instead know her as her more famous name, 
the Black Dahlia, which has become famous not only in this hotel, but across the world and across a lot of different media. It's kind of uncertain what really happened to her, but it's either she was either murdered inside the hotel or close to the hotel, but the exact location of her death and how she was killed remains a mystery. And finally getting to probably how most of us heard about the hotel originally is Alicia Lamb. This young woman from Canada wanted to come see the beautiful state of California. And when she started looking for hotels in the area, she would end up seeing the place called the Stay on Main. Here, she would look at photos online and see that it actually looked pretty nice. However, it would be found out that this new hotel, the Stay on Main, was just a remarketed version of the CISO Hotel and they were actually intertwined within. So they would use the same elevator and stairwells. So the people staying at the CISO Hotel and the people staying at the Stay on Main were just in the same building. And the CISO Hotel had a very different client base than the Stay on Main. And after going missing, Alicia Lane would be found within the water tanks on top of the hotel. And the only reason why she was found here was because guests were complaining about the water pressure and the taste of the water being weird. When police were trying to piece together what happened, they saw that her last sighting was recorded on a camera within the hotel and the elevator. Here she was acting sporadic, pressing random numbers, going in and out of the elevator, and talking to someone that wasn't there. And this led many people to believe that she had some kind of substance in her body, that she was drunk or taking drugs. But once they ended up doing the toxicology reports, they found that all the medications in her system were prescribed. And the ones that weren't prescribed were things like ibuprofen and an allergy medicine. So this just continued to add to like the weirdness and vagueness about what truly happened. And on top of all those weird things, the lid on top of the water tank was closed. So while it ended up being ruled as an accident, many people believe that it wasn't an accident and that it, she was murdered or was premeditated. Or like I said earlier, the hotel makes you do things that you wouldn't normally do outside of the hotel. Once you go in, you're a different person and something ended up taking over you. And with all of that in mind, and all of the crazy history that I just told you guys, it makes this part even crazier, because in 2021, the hotel would end up reopening, and it would be offering 600 rooms as low-income housing for those in need. And as of now, I'm not sure if this low-income housing is still available to those in need, or if people are still living there, but if you guys know, please leave it in the comments so not only I can be informed, but other people watching the video can be informed. And it'll get us a good insight into whether or not the hotel's still haunted and whether or not weird things are still happening there. Next on the list is the Hollywood Roosevelt Hotel. This hotel was constructed in 1927 for around $2.5 million, which is over $45 million today. According to the Historic Hotels of America, Mary Pitchford, Douglas Fairbanks, Louis B. Mayer, and Sid Grumman collaborated to help bring their visions to life. And they would also end up hiring Fisher, Lake, and Tavner to be the architects. And this group wanted one of the best hotels that they could make. And they did this by drawing inspiration from a Spanish colonial reveal style. However, over time, this original colonial reveal style would disappear as the hotel became more modern. But in 1985, the Radisson Hotel Company would end up buying the hotel and they would work to bring back the original beauty and their original style. And they would do this by investing over $35 million. Throughout the years, the Hollywood Roosevelt Hotel has been in a lot of movies and it's also hosted a lot of celebrities. And today it's more known for its YouTube and the history of it and the spirits and the haunted side of it being on YouTube and other social media. But going back to the celebrities that stayed there, we can see that the most infamous was Marilyn Monroe, who is said to still be there today, but that's due to her not only spending as much time as she did there, but also living there at a point. And because of the time that she spent there, it's said that she still attached the hotel, 
with some visitors saying that she randomly materialized in the mirror that was once in her room, which was Suite 1200 or Room 229. Another spirit commonly seen within the hotel is a little girl named Caroline, who is often seen wearing a pink jacket and blue jeans. Caroline was first documented in 1992 by a psychic named Peter James, and according to the Haunted Rooms website, Peter James heard the young girl crying about wanting to protect her mother and saying that her mother was in danger. But we don't know whether or not she was actually trying to protect her mother or not because Caroline has seemed to be very deceptive throughout the years, from her tricking both the receptionist that worked there to also many other guests that have stayed. And while Marilyn Monroe didn't die in the hotel, and the story behind Caroline and how she died remains a mystery, Cindy Nunn helped highlight a long list of deaths that actually occurred in the hotel. One casualty she actually mentioned was Frank Wyman Libby, who would end up dying from a self-inflicted gun wound after checking in to the hotel only two years after its grand opening. And what makes this death even weirder is that the hotel was only three miles away from his house. So he drove to the hotel, only three miles, paid for a room only to take his life. Another casualty within the hotel was Frank Lewis Duggan, who died in 1939. This would end up happening after staff would lock him in his room for being too intoxicated. And in his drunken state, he would end up tying all his sheets together on his bed and trying to get out of the hotel and out of the room. So being on the seventh floor, he tied his sheets together, put them out the window, and started climbing down. But ultimately, he would end up falling and dying on the third floor. After our visit to the Hotel Roosevelt, we now arrive at the Hotel Del Coronado. Opening in 1888, this hotel would open with over 400 rooms, and it cost around 600,000 to build, and to furnish, it cost around 400,000, which is crazy that over half the budget that it took to build the hotel was put into putting furniture in the place. The driving force behind the project was Alicia Babcock Jr., Hampton L. Story, and the San Diego developer Alonzo Horton. This hotel would end up being designed with a Victorian style and only ended up taking two years to plan, build, design, everything from the ground up. It only took two years. And after it was finished being built, it ended up being the largest hotel in the world at the time. And while the Hotel Del Coronado doesn't have a long list of deaths like the other places do on this list, it distinguishes itself from the rest because it only has one death and just because of how weird the one death is. And the one death and the haunted reputation that it has today and the reason why it's on this list is all due to one person. And that person is Lodi A. Bernard. This 24 year old woman would end up checking into the room in 1892 and she was given room 302. And while checking in, people working at the hotel would mention that the young woman was acting weird and upset and kept mentioning the fact that she was waiting for a man to arrive. And as the days went on, Lodi would explain that she was actually waiting for her brother and she would end up asking over and over again what was going on with her brother and whether or not he had checked in yet and just as the days went on you could just tell and many of the people working at the hotel could tell that she was just sinking into a greater state of depression and also as time went on the people working at the hotel found out that she actually wasn't waiting for her brother and was instead waiting for another man and on the fifth day of her staying at the hotel, she would venture into the town nearby, where she would end up purchasing a gun, saying that it was a Christmas present for her brother. However, that same gun would later be used to take her own life within room 302. This incident would cause so many unknowns and so many questions, and as police were getting closer to figuring out what happened, newspapers were getting published across the whole country about this woman that checked into the hotel. And I just think it's crazy that in 1892, this death would be that like well known across the country and that published across the country. Like in my mind that long ago, it's kind of crazy that there's still like the same things happening today where someone dying kind of, or a, mis a mystery happening just 
takes the whole country and the whole world by surprise and everybody just wants to invest so much time and energy into it to try to figure out what happened and they create so many theories which actually ended up happening with this too and as like i said the police came closer they would end up talking to more witnesses with one saying that they saw her arguing with a man on the train and on top of this there was also a woman who told authorities that it was probably her missing daughter but it ended up not having anything to do with the person that checked into the hotel and her missing daughter Lizzie was a completely different person so that kind of just added a red herring to the whole thing and as time went on the story of Kate Morgan emerged her story begins with her giving birth to her son Thomas however not long after birth he would end up losing his life and this caused her to escape from her marriage and run away with her brother-in-law and once they made it to california she would end up checking into the hotel del coronado under the name of lodi bernard and to this day people still report sightings of the beautiful woman throughout the hotel but especially in room 302. some people say that they smell perfume just randomly appear or they hear knocks happening in the room and some have even said that they've seen her face within the tv and heard voices coming from random places throughout the hotel. And last on the list is the RMS Queen Mary. And honestly, to me, this one has the craziest history out of all the other ones on the list. This 12 deck, 1019.4 foot ship was first put into construction in 1930. However, just one year after the construction started, the Great Depression started. And this depression would end up catching up to the ship being built and all work on the ship would end up coming to a halt. After securing money from the British government, the ship would end up being completed in 1934. And the British government actually invested $17.5 million, which is equivalent to like $330 million today. And during its debut, the Queen Mary set as one of the most beautiful things and beautiful ships that existed. Throughout it being built, they paid attention to every single detail and that really helped be a pinnacle of beauty and be the masterpiece it was at the time. While that all sounds amazing and the ship was beautiful, there is a reason why it's on the list. Because only after a few years of sailing, World War II would break out. And they would end up putting the ship into Normandy with a few other ships, but the government didn't want to just throw the money it invested into it away. So they would end up thinking and they would eventually decide that it would be a troop transport ship. And this meant that they had to do a bunch of renovations and all that to it to help get it prepared for World War II. These transformations and renovations that were made to the ship include painting it a navy gray, taking out all the carpets, the furniture, and doing a whole lot of stuff to help get it prepared for a troop transport ship and a lot of the stuff that they'd end up taking out would be put into storage. And during the war, the ship would end up carrying thousands and thousands of troops back and forth to different places. And once it ended, the ship would end up going back into renovation to restore the beauty that it was before the war. And all those pieces that were put into storage were put back into the ship. Because of the cost and time it took to restore the ship, it ended up creating a kind of weird timeline for the ship where it would go from one owner to the next to being left abandoned to even at one point disney owning it so that just kind of shows you that this timeline was just insane and eventually it would ended up being opened as a hotel and a place that you can tour today and due to the extensive history and all the deaths that ended up happening on the ship it's actually earned in many people's eyes the title as the most haunted hotel in America. And like I said, the long list of deaths, it's reported that over 49 people have died on the ship. And this doesn't include another time in World War II where the ship collided with another ship and an additional 239 people died because of that. And all of this makes it well surpass all the other places on the list for most deaths and probably will be one of the highest death counts of the places within America. But with all of that in mind, there are three paranormal hotspots within the ship, with one of those being the first class pool. This pool was once adorned with fountains, lights, and tiles that went across the whole room and the whole pool. And only those wealthy enough and 
Titleist First Class could actually get to this pool. And despite this beauty, there's been a lot of witnesses saying that they've seen a lot of apparitions and spirits within this room, with some saying that they've seen a woman in a wedding dress alongside a young boy trying to go swimming, to others seeing a woman dressed to play tennis. And once they see her, she'll run behind a pillar, and when they go try to find her, she's just completely gone. Another focal point for paranormal activity on the ship is hatch door number 13. The story behind this door started in 1966, when an 18 year old man would be given the orders to go close the doors and all of the hatches and stuff within the boiler room and engine rooms. And when he got down there, he would start closing the doors and hatch door number 13 would end up crushing him. But he wouldn't die from the initial crush. He would end up being found and they would end up coming and getting him, taking him out, and he would end up later dying on the ship. And because of this, people say that they still see the man to this day, with some people saying that he'll come up and touch their face, and when they look in the mirror or other people look at them, they'll have grease on their face where they were touched. Other people have said that a random man will be like, hey, can I have a wrench? And when they go get a wrench or try to ask more questions, the man isn't there anymore. And I think the most like well-known version of this, this man being in the boiler room and engine rooms is a lot of people have seen a person just randomly run across the engine room and just disappear into thin air and no trace of them be ever found or anything like that. The last paranormal hotspot I'm going to mention is the tragic story behind a man who would end up checking into room B340 where a man would end up dying under mysterious circumstances in 1948, and his death is still completely unsolved and a mystery to this day. And 18 years later, in 1966, a woman would end up checking into the hotel and be given the keys to room B340. And as you do, she went to the hotel, she went to her room, and went to sleep like you do in a hotel. And that night, she would be woken up in the middle of the night by a man pulling her sheets off of her bed. And as soon as she saw the man, she did what any normal person would do, she screamed. And as soon as she yelled, the man disappeared. This incident actually marked the beginning of many weird things happening in the room, from hearing knocking, uh, lights flickering, faucets turning on and off, voices, all kinds of stuff. And what makes this even weirder, like if none of this stuff wouldn't have happened, or if this stuff was not real, it makes this part even weirder because like the hotel ended up closing this room for several years because of all the strange things that were happening. And I don't think that they would just randomly close a room without things actually happening there. Thank you guys for watching today's video and I hope you all enjoyed the first part of the 50 part series called The Haunted 50. And if you did enjoy it, please hit that subscribe button like the video so I can know that you guys enjoyed it and so I can see what you guys think about it. And if there are any other places you want me to talk about within California, let me know. And if it's interesting enough, I might make a video specifically about that or end up making another video about California altogether. Let me know what state you guys would like me to do next so I can continue this 50 part series. Anyways, thank you guys for watching today's video and I'll see you next video. Peace out.